So thank you for the opportunity to speak today, and, and I think I really enjoy the um, introductory um, section. And, and so I think Dr. Kramsey really have given us the, the key about what the scheduling system should look like and the complexity of it. So in this section, we have five panelists, and um, I'm going to start with this panel, um, basically give you an overview of what's out there in the system. So if you look at what the scheduling system, and this is actually partly answer Don's question about why do we need a scheduling system in the sense that this is really a new feature in hospital and if you look at what is the patient scheduling software the key really is to automate the um, the appointment process you try to maximize the number of patients that you can actually take care of and you want to reduce uh, the wait time you also want to really minimize no show and cancellation and there's such thing called like you can overbook, which is not a very nice feature to have because you don't want to really not being able to see these patients that were overbooked. But you can have a wait list so that you can take advantage of all those empty. But the goal of the scheduling system is a lot, a lot more, as we saw this morning in the first section. And because it really serves, as, as I like to say, is an end-to-end -end system. It is how do you serve the patient right as they enter the system and when they actually leave the system. So it is really important. So here's how I see how technology can actually power a scheduling system. And if you look at this one, it's like, here's the interface. The users are patients, physicians, and staff. And basically, here is the scheduling agent. And once they actually get the schedule or get the appointment, call up and, and say, I need an appointment, then this individual will be interacting with all sorts of things and trying to look at all the data from the EMR. And the EMR data comes from many different sites, right? So if you look at this, I really like the comment that Lisa made about schedulers, because I actually interviewed about 20 schedulers. These individuals, even in private sectors, they are the first and frontline person, but they also are the persons that really feel they are not being appreciated. They're very important day to day, but yet they also are not the one that make a lot of decisions. So I think this is not the VA, not just the VA issue. It's a lot of issues across the entire country, basically private sectors felt exactly the same. So if we look at this person, he or she managed the system using all the tools that is available to, to her or him. And these are the tools. And that is not just about scheduling. This is about integrating everything for the, really, for the patient itself. And, and that's really a very complex system. So major features, if you look at it, like we have uh, patient pre-registration, patient information, scheduling, and communication. And that's many of us already realize. Each of these is a complex issue. Now, VA may not have pre-registration issue because they don't have to worry about insurance and everything. But on the other hand, this is really what is there. And I think the irony, as you see a lot of my slides as I, as I look at a lot of the software, is about the EMR system. And you will see that maybe Cerna and Epic don't have that issue and, and other places will have it. So what are the true advanced features? And this is really the heart of the integration and interoperability. How do you manage the patient visit? How do you handle workflow of management? So to give you an idea, Columbia University spent the last 18 months to migrate to the Epic system. They have engaged 2,500 different special experts in the clinic and basically trying to get all the workflow like integrated within their EPIC system. You're talking about one single site, right? One single university have a few multiple sites. And then you talk about VA, which is a lot bigger, right? It's the network itself. So I think it's really a complex issue. How do you deal with the workflow? Truly care coordination, as we say it. It's not just one-time visit because a lot of these patients have a lot of care. How do you coordinate all of them? Physician management, their schedules and preference and holidays and management. How do you really deal with business intelligence? A lot of times we think about scheduling as just for individual patients, but how do you look at organization standpoint and integrate everything? And that's why I asked the question to uh, Dr. Pemsey is, do you expect this scheduling system in the VA to be integrated across, right? If I were a, a veteran, I have special needs. I can actually interact and, and say, I need to schedule certain um, specialty care. And I just go to one system and I could access to all, right? So this is really the future. And I always like to say the future is now, right? Because if you talk about future, then we will never get there. So we must make that movement is exactly at the moment. How do you deal with billings? 
And this is a big part of the issue because billings is not just about billings and money and finance. It truly is about what type of service have been provided, right? And that's accountability about what type of service and who is giving them. And then I love the idea about telehealth, and, and I also like that VA is embracing it. Indeed, they are really uh, fine events. And I think the community-based hub and spoke network is, is extraordinarily important. So I look at uh, 18 different projects, and I need to have a disclaimer here. I'm not endorsing any of them. So this is just to give you an idea. After the IOM report, it really sprung out lots of business. People really respond to it, not just the VA, but like companies respond to it. And they try to respond to, what do you need? And, and it will be, I like your, like, at the end, I like your comments about what do you think about their response, OK? So the type of product is their standalone solutions. And there are some integrated solutions where they try to integrate certain features in it, but, but let's see how far they can do it. And standalone one, this is a really a self-scheduling system, and you can use mobile apps and everything. Basically, you go in and you just select a time, exactly like in the old days when you go to a theater and you say, I want to sit here, and then there's an empty spot, and you can choose those, and then you, you are assigned that. So that's how it works, very simple. And you go online and you choose the the site, and then, and then you choose the location, you choose the date, and then you are assigned this one and telling you exactly. And then you may even tell them exactly what your problem is. So here you can write down what exactly is your problem, and then, and then the doctors will actually know when you come in what, what your issues are in terms of the medical. And then if you look at this one, it's a little bit updated. Like Now you have the menu. I think this is the most ironic part as you go through this. It's the manual input of patient appointment information. It's a lot of this system is designed to be used manually. So basically, it's just a computerized system where you just type in things by the schedulers. So it is not really using an algorithm. But nonetheless, it, it is cloud-based, and it gives you the ability to access to it. And interesting is that by preference and also um, really like combinations of preference and choices, then you can actually compare different doctors also. So because people allowed you to compare different doctors and different services. And this one has the reminder. So now we talk about recall in the VA, right? You remind patients, um, like, remember to come in or that you have to come in because we we need, like, there are certain things that we need to remind you or certain things that are new about your, your health uh, status. And so that's, like, this one has reminders, not just for patients, but also for providers. And simple app, right? So, and it's interesting. And then add more, more, like, a little bit, like, all of these are identical. Now it add the... Um, direction traffic, uh, like real-time traffic uh, alert. I don't know, some of you may not care about that, but if you go to the ED and you like to make sure that you get to the ED and that you get the care uh, like rapidly, then you care about the time also, even though like in Atlanta, we may be traveling four miles and if, if it takes one whole hour, then you're not going to be able to go to that ED and you will choose another site. So that could be a, an important feature also. And again, mobile device and, and it's really kind of nice. Here. And, and now this is interesting. My cousin is the one that actually, and sorry, I don't have any pictures for, from, from them because I cannot find any. And uh, so they also use manual input for appointment. But what they claim they are able to do is they are able to really do some block analysis. Like that means if somebody say, oh, today I cannot go, and then they actually is able to re-optimize it to allow someone else to take those uh, positions, like those, those slots. So they use a little bit of the optimization approach here to try to balance the workload among all the providers. So that's what the, the uh, at least on the survey that we, we look at. And now those are standalone. If you look at integrated system, and integrated system looks almost exactly the same, right? No difference. I, I'm, I cannot tell exactly what is being integrated, except that I think it is cloud-based. And so basically, you don't need to store the information and integrate it like in, in their server sites. And that means you won't lose the information. And, and or, or on the other hand, you may not be able to control those information either. And so that's like the appointment itself is also very simple. And then this one, now. For the very first time, it, as you see the name, right, Billings. So this is the first time that they actually um, link with Billings. And I don't quite understand why they only link with Billings and not EMR. But my feeling is because they are thinking, 
like EMR has more PHI information and everything, but Billings, it just have the codes, right? So you don't have to worry about that. So I talked to them and they didn't have an answer for me. So I cannot tell exactly. So again, it's a manual system, but then it integrate with the billing so that it it may give the patient a little bit more flexibility in knowing if this is the type of service I am requesting, what do I expect to pay our pockets and, and what is my insurance going to pay for? And this next generation one is uh, similar, all the menu, and then cloud-based. And then uh, very interesting is that it is a manual self-scheduling uh, system, but the computer automated the process. That means if you and I both log in at the same time and you grab the spot, then I won't be able to grab that same spot. So it is like automated in that sense. But other than that, it's, it's pretty primitive also. And again, a lot of block diagram and stuff. So this is the one I am most confused, and if some of you, if you know, because by name it says EHR, so I was really excited. I thought, wow, they connect to the EHR. It has absolutely nothing connecting to the EHR. So my feeling is it could be the future that they are expecting. They want to connect, you know, but, and so they, they add the name to it, you know. And, and so it's, it's very simple. And a lot of them, um, if you have gone to hospitals, you notice that hospitals now are really, really into dashboards. And I'm sure VA has many. I saw so many fancy ones. And every time I go to the VA, they tell me this is new. And they tell me that, OK, you may have seen it in the other VA, but ours is different. And, and I do agree, too. So it's a little different. But dashboards are a burden, at least a blessing and a curse. So a blessing in a sense that you, as an individual, you see everything in front of your eyes, right? But you, as an individual, you cannot make decisions because there are so many variables. So it is, a, it is something that you can see, but you really cannot make the best decision. And then this Azalea Health EHR, and this one matching the insurance information with individual billings. So this one is one step more than just billings. It allows you to actually check with your insurance, like, like maybe what, what type of places that you should be seeing the doctors. And again, very complicated dashboards and color-coded and then gives you information about like where you can go and what you can go. This is the first one that talk about physicians. And I like that, MD connection, right? But so you can kind of see how the name actually sounds, is that they connect the doctor's schedule with the patient. So you would think this is really the key for a scheduling system, right? If, if you have no providers, time, how would you really worry about scheduling for patients? But in a VA setting, it's actually very interesting because the doctors select time and then the nurses select time. So at the end, it is the patient that have to select whatever that is available to them. So I think that's really quite important to have that. And now this one basically simple, similar. GE Healthcare is a lot of I know a lot of colleagues in this area. I also do not understand. I think they have a good intention to connect to EMR, but at the moment they don't have that capability yet. And so again, extraordinary like manual process, and basically you just put in all the information. And this one is is uh, the same. I think this is the the nice one. E prescription. That might be very useful because a lot of the calls to the VA um, call center is about prescription and, and a refill. And so I think e-prescription is really good and you can actually, and it is going to the portal. On the other hand, there is a concern about patients um, abuse the uh, prescription uh, rec uh, refill. Because I know uh, when, when we work for the VA, it says some of the patients always lost their drugs and, and, then, and then the doctors always wonder why did you lose their drugs, right? So, so if you can make it so easy for them to refill, then maybe there is also a potential that they will, they will abuse that. There's also virtual appointments. So you can see now things are getting more complicated, right? More interesting, like, because you see people are like um, getting to there. And uh, some of these messengers, you already have it. Um, and then this one, I, I think the only thing that Noid MD has that seems everybody likes is the color coding scheme. But the color is so complicated. Like from my point of view, like there's all these colors on dashboard. You really cannot figure out exactly who are the doctors that is available. But nonetheless, that's the, 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 um, what they emphasize. And then um, not too much new here, right? So I'm almost done. And this one, 
this is the only system out there that actually model the hospital operations. So to give you an idea is that you can basically um, design a system where you actually know and track all the doctors and your resources. So you know exactly what are the resources you have and you can optimize through the day. But they, they optimize, they model it, but they don't really optimize it. So at least they let you find the providers. So at least manually you can, you can look for them and say, okay, I have the doctor and then you can go to this site. So then rehab system, and so all of the ones I showed you are primary care. So if you, if you think about it, I truly believe VA is really leading the crowd, right? Clearly, your system is a lot more complicated. But nonetheless, you have also a more complicated system than some of these standalone system that is only designed for a much smaller uh, healthcare organization. So this is the um, for therapy, physical therapy. And I really like the feature that they have here is waiting list. I like the mentioning this morning in the first section about you don't want overbooking because you really don't know what to do with the patients if you put them in a slot when two patients are in the same slot. But the waiting lists work really well. It's that patients are willing to be put on waiting lists even though they have a later appointment. And if there's any opening, they will get bumped earlier and they love it. And I, I know the VA like patients really love that because they feel that this is something that they appreciate. And then that would really optimize your time. To give you an idea, you can improve your efficiency by 30%. Just have a wait list like that. So, and, and, and this is amazing. It's a feature that nobody really thinks so much about. Now, I attempt last night, and, and, and hopefully you will see this graph, is, is exactly all the features that are out there at the moment. And then uh, these are the system that I showed you. So you could see that from this graph, the ideal system should have, should have what? Everything, right? And more, of course, a lot more. But so you can see, really, where are we in scheduling? We are just at infancy, truly. So that answered Don's question, right? He said, how can, can we imagine if we don't have any, we didn't have any to begin with, so we are just actually starting as a toddler, right? So. I do like to um, mention here is the key limitations. First, I, when I interview some of these software places is that none of them really can handle PHI and hyper compliant uh, information about connecting it to an EMR system. It is too complicated for them to even think about. Okay, so that's, that is something VA does not have to worry about because you have Epic, you have Cerner, and basically, you are integrated to begin with, right? But how to make it work? Data security and accuracy is very important. And the reason why this is, cannot be overlooked is, is the following. Is that I'm looking at a system that is very, very advanced. And they actually were able to track exactly which bed is being occupied. But in order for somebody to actually see from from one room to another room to know that your bed is, is actually available for my patient, it took about 15 to 30 minutes. But if you're in ICU, you know that that is too long, right? If you're in the ED, you cannot wait for this long. So the communication of a very fancy system still cannot give you real-time access. From my point of view, you really need real-time, very accurate accountability here. What are the challenges? How do you capture all the data? How do you handle the multi-stage pathways of care? That's what we call care coordination, which is so important, right? But none of the scheduling system is able to do it. How do you truly optimize the entire system? And how do you do true integration? But this is the key part of all the scheduling system that I have seen. The scheduling relies on the human. And as Lisa made a perfect comment. The human is not too much appreciated, even though they are the front line and the first person, right, to be dealt with, like to deal with the patient and everything. So I think, like, we will, as, as this workshop continues, uh, you will see a lot of these being answered and, and a lot of the integration that we will mention in, uh, in Rachel's talk and also in Rachel's section and also in Joe's section on interoperability. So now I want to uh, bring to my panelists and, and uh, Don Goldman is our first panelist and he's going to make some comments about the IOM report and, and I know he has a lot of comments about scheduling system. Don. <laughs> 